welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Recently, I reviewed the new Threadripper 3990X, the 64 core 128 thread beast from AMD that laid waste to, well, every HED part out there. It is an insane productivity CPU. Everything about it is extreme. And having recently used it to torture a few really high-end motherboards, I thought why not try out some big bulky coolers as well. To date, all my 3990X testing has been conducted using a pretty high-end cooling setup, a custom loop using Corsair's Hydro X bits, 360 millimeter radiator, so plenty of cooling capacity there. And this has allowed me to keep the 64 core part under 70 degrees during an hour long blender stress test. Though as expected, temperatures did climb rapidly when overclocking, peaking at a little over 90 degrees. This had me wondering how practical air cooling the 3990X would be, especially for those wanting to overclock. As luck would have it, on hand are four purpose-built Threadripper air coolers from the likes of Noctua, Arctic, Deepcool, and Cooler Master. For testing, I'm using the Deepcool Newark 90 SE case from our VRM test setup. And again, all testing has been conducted with a 21 degree ambient temperature. The motherboard used is the Gigabyte TRX40 Aorus Extreme, and as usual, I'm using our Gooseberry Blender workload to stress the CPU. Additionally, the fan speeds have been controlled via the motherboard using the CPU PWM fan header with the F4A BIOS for the Aorus Extreme, and I've left the normal fan profile active, so the fan curve has not been altered in any way. So with that, let's jump to the results, and then I'll talk about the cons and pros for each option. Okay, so first up, here is how each cooling solution works with the 3990X stock. As expected, the Corsair Hydro X delivers the best result thanks to that large 360mm radiator. But I've got to say, the gains over the Noctua NHU14S are very small, just 4 degrees when configuring the Noctua cooler with two fans in a push-pull configuration. And the fans were also spinning relatively slow at just 1200 RPM. With just a single fan, the NHU14S peaked at 76 degrees, so a four degree increase, which really isn't bad, though this did make it the hottest configuration tested, albeit by just a degree. The Arctic Freezer 50TR also performed quite well, and while it was just a degree hotter than the NHU14S, the fans were spinning 50% faster and did generate noticeably more noise, which we'll look at soon. The deep cool Verizon appears even worse. The fans were spinning 200 RPM faster while the temperature increased by 2 degrees, but the Verizon is noticeably quieter than the dual fan freezer 50TR. Then we have the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper. That's always disappointed me, this cooler. It's such an incredibly awesome looking cooler, but the performance has always been suboptimal, let's say. With the single centrally located fan squealing at 2,500 RPM, it only managed to keep the 3990X at 75 degrees. And while that is still a degree better than the NHU14S with a single fan, the Noctua cooler was basically silent in that configuration. The Wraith Ripper really needs a fan on the outer side of the heatsink, like what we see with the Freezer 50TR, for example. As it is, the fan which is wedged between the two fin stacks has to spin far too fast in order to move air through the heatsink. I'm actually surprised by how similar the temperature results are with the 3990X overclocked to 3.8 GHz using 1.25 volts. Here we're looking at just a 6 degree difference between the best and worst cooling solutions. The Wraith Ripper did manage to avoid thermal throttling despite peaking at 100 degrees, but that's obviously not a temperature you want to run your $4,000 US processor at for extended periods of time. The dual fan Noctua NHU14S did perform very well, running just a degree hotter than the Corsair Hydro X custom loop. The Arctic Freezer 50TR also performed well, though it was considerably louder than the Corsair and Noctua setups. Speaking of volume, here is how much noise each configuration generated. Basically Corsair and Noctua are the kings of quiet, though we're comparing two very different products here, so really it's just Noctua that have earned a pat on the back. It's the dual fan configuration that delivered the best results, running just a few decibels louder than the custom loop for a very similar thermal result. We also see that Deepcool's Fryzen did a little better than Arctic's Freezer 50TR in that regard, while the Wraith Ripper buzzed away to the tune of 52 decibels. Finally, if we look at operating temperature versus noise level, we get a clearer picture of just how good the Noctua NHU14S is. Basically, the dual fan configuration was noticeably quieter than the Arctic, Deep Cool, and Cooler Master options while delivering slightly better thermal performance. 
The Arctic Freezer 50TR and Deep Cool Fries and appear quite similar, and I'd say at a normalized volume, you'd be looking at identical results. The Wraith Ripper really needs the fans spinning well above 2000 RPM to avoid unacceptably high temperatures, which is disappointing for such a massive cooler. And while the design does look impressive, it really isn't that efficient or effective. And finally, for those of you wondering, dropping the fan speed of the Wraith Ripper down to 1800 RPM saw stock 3990X temps rise by more than 10 degrees. So there you have it. Air cooling the Threadripper 3990X is not only possible, and with something like the Noctua NH-U14S, it's also very practical, though I would recommend adding in a second fan. The NH-U14S is surprisingly affordable, coming in at just $70 US, though a second NFA15 fan will set you back an additional $22. So for the optimized configuration tested here, you're looking at more like $92 US. And really, that's not much more than the $84 you'll pay for Deep Cool's Fryzen, though it is quite a bit more than the $70 Arctic are asking for the Freezer 50TR. Then there's the Wraith Ripper, which didn't perform very well in our testing, and it costs an eye-watering $120 US. And at that point, you might as well start looking at all-in-one liquid coolers. The price alone really does make the Wraith Ripper a tough buy, but when you couple that with loud operating volume and mediocre performance, it is a hard pass for me, which again is unfortunate given how impressive it looks. One area where the Wraith Ripper excels is installation. It's by far the quickest and easiest cooler to install. Cooler Master really did an excellent job here with the design but where they didn't do a great job was with that centrally located fan. Not only does it hinder performance, but I found with three retail models now, after a short period of time, the fan starts to make a really strange high pitched sound whenever it idles up or spins down. It's kind of hard to explain, but it is extremely annoying. So for me, the Wraith Ripper really is a hard pass. The Arctic Freezer 50TR certainly performs better than the Wraith Ripper, and it's over 40% cheaper, so a big win there already. It's not the most quiet cooler, but it does offer a reasonable balance between thermal performance and operating volume. The installation process is a bit janky though. It's easy enough to remove the fan, but clipping it back in without it rubbing on something is a little bit tricky, and vibration also seemed to be a big issue here as well, and I'm a little dubious as to how well this thing will perform over time. Also, memory clearance really isn't great. Anything taller than G-Skills Trident Z, and you'll be up that famous creek without a paddle. And this is an area where Deepcool's fries and excels. The compact design of this cooler means memory clearance is a non-issue. In fact, it's remarkable just how well the fries and performs for what is really a relatively small heatsink with just a single fan. It is a neat cooler though that looks great and performs well enough. Build quality is excellent, and the installation process is fairly simple. If you're after something that looks good and does a good job, then Deep Cool's Fryzen is a nice option. The only issue for me though, being for a few dollars more, you can get yourself an NHU14S with the extra fan, and that really is the ultimate combo for air cooling a Threadripper CPU. In short, both the Arctic Freezer 50TR and Deep Cool Fryzen are worth considering, depending on your needs, but ultimately Noctua's NHU14S has them beat. And with that, I'm going to end this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the work we do at Harabox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.